Hey there, my name is Paul and this is Out of Neutral, a weekly tune-up where we look to the Bible to get in gear and follow Jesus into the life he came to make possible. Today I want to talk about the four voices of loneliness and how to answer them. In an interview with Diane Sawyer, Winona Ryder opened up about the loneliness she struggled with as a teenager. She said, I was wishing so badly that I had someone to talk to, a friend, someone, and I didn't. And I saw this ma- saw this magazine stand, this outdoor magazine stand, and I saw myself on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. And it said something like, Winona Ryder is the luckiest girl in the world. And it broke my heart because there I was in so much pain and feeling so confused, feeling so lost in my life. Winona Ryder's experience is heartbreaking to hear, but it helps dispel some of the wrong thinking that we often have about loneliness. We often assume that somebody that pretty or that successful couldn't be lonely. It's like we assume loneliness is the penalty that you get for not measuring up in the game of life. Not only is that not true, but it adds the weight of condemnation to the pain of loneliness itself. Loneliness affects just about everyone at different points in their life, but it comes in different forms. Consider the four voices of loneliness and how you can answer them. The first voice of loneliness is the one that says, no one understands me. Anyone who's who's moved to another country has probably felt this, but even your own neighborhood or your own family, it's easy to feel misunderstood. Nobody gets what I'm going through. One of the most encouraging truths of the Bible is that God knows us deeply and personally. Psalm 139 is worth reflecting on. It describes God the way many people talk about a best friend. He knows what we're thinking. He understands what we want to say before we even said it. He formed us in the womb and saw every day of our lives before it came to pass. God is so committed to showing us that he understands how we feel that when he came into this world, he did so as someone who was so misunderstood that his family thought he was crazy. And the people of his own hometown tried to throw him off a cliff. God understands you. The second voice of loneliness is the one that says, no one needs me. We can feel like we're not needed anymore. This can set in when your children grow up or you retire from your job. Part of the problem is that we can define ourselves by our families or our careers. And so when there's an adjustment, it feels like we've lost our identity. The Bible says our most foundational identity is as children of God. We've been created with a purpose. Ephesians 2.10 says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Our roles may change, but as long as there are people in need, there are people who need you. Look for someone who's lonely. The third voice of loneliness is the one that says, no one can help me. Feeling like there's no one who can help can be terrifying. We can face times when the need is very practical. We don't feel like there's anyone we can turn to. Other times you can feel alone when you're facing a problem that people can't solve. The Bible is filled with reminders of God's presence with us, his care for us, and the the assurance that he'll never let us go. Far from being unwilling to help us, the Bible teaches that the bigger problem is our independence. We tend to live as if God doesn't exist, but we were created to live in reliance on the God who loves us. Similarly, God designed us to build supportive relationships in the family of God, but we often keep our distance and guard our time for ourselves until we're in a crisis. There's help for you in a relationship with God and his people. The fourth voice of loneliness is the one that says, no one loves me. I think that we've created this final category of loneliness. Our culture sends the subtle and sometimes not so subtle message that being single means being unloved. Being alone must mean being lonely. But this is just untrue. Jesus was single. The apostle Paul was single. John the Baptist was single. Nehemiah, Jeremiah were single too. Some of the people that the Bible holds up as having the fullest and most significant lives in the Bible were single. 
their confidence came from their assurance of God's love for them. In our culture, it almost feels ironic to hearing the, hear the Apostle Paul praying for the largely married congregation in Ephesus that they would know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. God's love for you is real. Now, sooner or later, almost everyone faces feelings of loneliness. Before you hear one of the voices of loneliness, learn to answer it with the encouragement and the relationships that God calls us to. If this is new to you and you think it's something you'd like to explore, I've written a free 12-week course called The Unstuck Life, and it walks you through the essentials of Jesus' teachings in daily bite-sized messages that you can read or watch by video. To learn more, go to gracebc.ca forward slash get unstuck. That's all for this time. Today's video has helped you get out of neutral. Leave a comment, share it with your friends, and subscribe to join us on the journey.